Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be doing an amp and sub in this 2018 Nissan Sentra. Now, in this video, we're going to show you how to run all the wiring and integrate this amp and sub to the factory audio sound system. Let's get started. Now we're in the trunk. It looks like this already had a system before. We're going to gut everything. We're pulling out kind of this uh, useless capacitor and uh, start fresh. What we're going to do is head over to the bench to show you the parts that we're going to use today for our install. All right, so here we are at the bench. Now the parts that we're going to go with first and foremost is the amplifier that we've chosen to go with. It's this SCAR Audio RP 800 by one does 800 watts RMS of one ohm. And to support that amplifier, we do need an amplifier wiring kit. This does come with power ground, RCA's remote turn on wire, fuse holder, and all the other accessories. And finally, since we are running this off the factory audio sound system, uh, at a minimum, you'll need this uh, digital line out converter. It's the LP7 2. It's a two channel digital line out converter where this also provides a remote turn on wire as well. Now, not pictured here on the bench, we're going with an SVR um, 800 watt RMS subwoofer in an enclosure. Uh, before, this customer had an SDR version that does 600 watts. That's fine too, uh, but you'll want something at one ohm if using this amp. First thing that we need to do is start planning our run from the under battery area to where we're going to be mounting our amplifier. Now we do have plenty of space up underneath the driver's seat. So we're going to mount this here. SCAR Audio strongly recommends that you do not mount these to the back of the box where this was previously um, as the vibrations can damage the internals of the amplifier. All right, under the hood here, um, batteries on the driver's side. Um, corner we will go here there's a ton of corrosion uh, customer did complain that the system when it was hooked up previously was to 8 gauge and the lights were dimming uh, there's no big three upgrade done we're only using 8 gauge wire here and there's a ton of corrosion so a lot of issues they decided to add a capacitor which won't solve the issue whatsoever because the charging system here under the hood is um, not supporting of the amperage needed by that amplifier. So we're going to be cleaning all this up here for the customer here. We remove the negative off the battery. Now what we'll do is um, run our power wire similarly through the firewall into the cabin of the vehicle. Now before we start running that power wire, let's go ahead and make space for that amplifier so we know exactly how much of a run length that we need from the battery to that amp. All right, so we spent a little time just prepping our amplifier here. With our seat rolled back, we actually measured the shape. We're gonna snag the rear seatbelt bolt there, and then this will nuzzle right there um, up underneath the seat, mounted our amplifier to it. We also cut a small hole so our airbag harness can actually fit through it and not be um, at, all, at all impacted. We've got our speaker wire with a nice long run of OFC 12 gauge speaker wire that'll go to the trunk. And finally, we have our ground ready to go. There's a factory ground right on the um, small ridge that the seat bolts to. And so we're gonna go to that factory ground. Uh, we put wire ferrules on everything here. So we've got wire ferrules, ferrules on here. We've got some on our ground. We'll also do some on the power wire and our remote turn on wire as soon as we're ready. That'll go to the ground. And then on the other end, we went ahead and put a ring terminal and put some heat shrink. So that's all good and cleaned up, ready to go. So. Um, we're just about done. We're going to get our RCAs and our base knob on this side, get everything zip tied down, and then we can take our amplifier to the car. Now, next thing we'll need to do is run power from up underneath the hood to the amplifier that will be located under the driver's side front seat. Right. So now at this point in time with the hood open, we're ready to start running our wire through the firewall. Now, we gutted everything else here. We actually are working on cleaning up our battery. It was extremely corroded. What we're going to do at this point is pull our new 4-gauge power wire through the firewall into the inside of the vehicle. Now we have our notorious metal hanger that we're going to use as our fish. Let's go ahead and show you how we got this through that firewall using a factory grommet up underneath the steering column. So up underneath the steering column here, 
we have the factory grommet. So if we pull this off to the side, there is our large rubber boot. Now this hole was already done by the previous installer, but essentially you get a small little razor blade just to cut a small slit in that rubber boot, staying well away from the factory loom there. And what we did is we got our hanger here and pushed it through that hole that we cut and it popped out the other side. Pushed it enough all the way through that we can grab it from the top side. So what we're gonna do now with this all the way through is we're gonna tape our wire to it. We'll lube it up really well with some soap and water. And from the inside of the car, we're gonna go ahead and pull our wire from the engine bay into the cabin. Here's our wire ready to go. Again, we're gonna lube this up with some soap and water so it's nice and slippery, just to make our life a little easier. Okay, so we finished pulling that wire on through. You saw us do that here. And we routed our wire. We made a little fuse mount out of ABS plastic and it just gets sandwiched underneath the battery bracket. We mounted our fuse holder to that little piece of ABS plastic and we'll go to the stud of the positive post once everything's been hooked up. Now currently we have the airbag harness disconnected from the seat so we don't want to hook up power and ground yet to anything until we reconnect the seat just so we don't throw a false code on the dash. So with this all done up underneath the hood, now let's head inside the car and start running our wire. The next thing we need to do besides routing our power wire to our amp under the seat would be preparing our ground. So we routed our power wire, goes up underneath and we'll fish it through the carpet where we're gonna mount our amplifier there. Now for our ground, we do have a nice factory ground right there. What we'll do is actually pull that 10 millimeter out, clean it up with a wire brush so there's no paint whatsoever, and I'll include our amplifier ground with those factory grounds as well. So the last things we need to worry about is getting signal to the amp via RCA and a remote turn on wire. All right, so ground is done, nice and clean. No paint there. Got the uh, factory grounds back on, nice and tight at this point. Let's go ahead and reassemble the floor here and get our amplifier mounted and our wires ran. Alrighty, that's all done. We got our amp all in. Obviously we'll need to wipe it down, do a little vacuum from up underneath the seat. Power wire runs down, obviously it goes up through the firewall there. Our ground is that factory ground location. Speaker wire output, we ran that down. We go towards the back. And RCAs, we're gonna to go towards the back because uh, we're gonna tap into the rear, uh, rear six by nine, they call them subs or low range speakers there in the back. Um, so we'll put our line out converter back there. And then finally, our remote turn on wire, the little blue wire, it's gonna go up to the fuse box. And finally, the base knob wire will go, and it's already mounted because this was already installed. This is just a rescue, um, but that's that. So it looks nice and clean. We'll need to wipe everything down. It's gonna snag that rear bolt hole and uh, make it nice and snug. And really that's it for the amplifier. We put the terminals on this side so we can tune it. Uh, before we hook anything up though, we'll need to make sure we connect our airbag harness there for the seat. But for the most part, um, we're gonna clean up some wiring here. The last thing we need to do is do the install for our line out converter back in the trunk area. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about our line out converter because we have a factory radio. Obviously the factory radio doesn't have RCA outputs for a sub channel for our amplifier. So we need to provide our amplifier some sort of signal so it knows what to play. And a line out converter does that for us. Now, if you have the upgraded Bose sound system in your Nissan Sentra, you're gonna need a high power input like this uh, LP72 which allows you to convert that high power input from those subs, uh, factory subwoofers in the rear deck to the RCA output needed for your amplifier. It also will provide a uh, remote turn on wire. However, in our case, we actually don't have the Bose sound system and upon cleaning out the old factory equipment, we actually are going to reuse the line out converter. It's an install bay basic line out converter um, that should do fine in our circumstance. Now, again, if you have Bose, you'll need the high power input one. Um, if you don't have Bose like we do, um, you'll just use your basic line out converter here and that should be just fine. Those factory six by nines in the rear deck without Bose are gonna only see about 15 to 20 watts at the most RMS. So what we're gonna do is this line out converter has two channels. Uh, we have two sets of speaker wire here 
One set is going to go to the left side speaker. One set is going to go to the right side speaker. Uh, we went ahead and soldered on this 18 gauge wire. We'll put some heat shrink up and over those connections. And then these other ends here, we're going to tap into the speaker wire of those 6x9s in the rear deck. Again, it's going to provide our line out converter the signal needed. It's going to output signal to the RCAs and those RCAs will run all the way up to the amplifier that we've installed up underneath the seat. So without further ado, let's go ahead and move that heat shrink up and over those connections. We'll shrink it down with a heat gun and get this thing installed. Okay, so we test the taped our harness just to get a little more protection so it doesn't get necked on anything here. Let's go ahead and strip these wires back and then we'll head inside of the car to show you what's positive and negative on both six by nines so you can get these installed yourself. All right, so we are here in the trunk. Now we have our two six by nines there in the rear deck. This is where we're gonna tap into for our speaker signal. Now we unplugged them here, pulled back the shielding and we soldered in our positive and negative. We didn't break the connection whatsoever. We stripped them back ever so slightly just to expose the copper wire and soldered our lead onto that, just snagging the signal. Now our positive on the passenger side is gonna be a solid violet and the negative is gonna be violet with like a orange stripe. And then we're gonna run this across the top once we zip tie it in place. Now this already had a system in it and they've already kind of butchered this so we don't wanna make it worse. So we lift that there. And our positive on this side is gonna be the kind of white green and our negative is gonna be our white gray. And again, we just soldered onto their lead there. And uh, we'll tape that and relume the rest of the harness here and plug those back in. Then if we pull this on back, we'll run that wire down here. We'll mount our line out converter there, RCAs, and then our RCAs, which we have here from the amplifier, will run forward to the amp that's underneath the driver's seat. So let's tape up our connection, zip tie our wire. We're pretty close. The last thing we need to do is tap into the fuse socks for an accessory output wire. Okay, so we got that all reinstalled there. Everything's all zip tied. Put our line out converter there. We just bundled our extra wire there. It'll sit all the way back behind this carpet and all goes down forward to the amplifier. So we're done back here in the trunk. We can reinstall the trunk liner. All right, so we got the amp all mounted. All the panels are back together here. Looks nice and clean. We just need to sit our gains with an SMD DD1, but it'll bolt into that location there, and it's gonna be sit nice and snug there. Doesn't get in the way of the floor mats. There's no floor vents or anything up underneath here. It's a perfect location for this amp, up and out of the way and not on the back of the box. So the last thing we didn't cover is a remote turn on wire, which went into this fuse location again from the previous installer and we'll show you what that looks like here in a moment but that top fuse right there it's going to be on switch power we uh, used an ADA circuit here and then from this point we um, crimped use a crimp cap and crimped our remote turn on wire which goes down to the remote input on our amplifier so that's going to trigger the amplifier to turn on when the key is on alrighty let the sub in trunk all back together Nice thing is you don't have any of that stuff in there anymore. It's all nice and clean, just a single sub. Got the seat all back. Fits so well up underneath there. You can kind of see a little blue light, but in case you do have to do some tune, you just pop the 4T50 bolts out and lay it back, but we got it perfectly tuned to our factory radio. So that's all done and good to go. All our panels are all back together here. Let's check underneath the hood. All right, so up underneath the hood, we got everything done and good to go. Cleaned up our terminals here. We're gonna put some preventative on these terminal terminals so the corrosion will be minimized here. It's not perfect, especially with this bare metal since it's eaten away. So we will suggest either repainting that or replacing the battery tie down. Um, and also a battery upgrade. This, I believe this is the original battery for the vehicle. Um, but everything is done up underneath the hood. Got the nice fuse holder mount done. And uh, at this point, we are good to go. Obviously, we'll put the negative back on the battery once the amplifier was hooked up and we connected our airbag sensor up underneath the seat. All right, so that's about it for this install. Now, if you wanna see any of the parts that we use today, we'll link everything down in the description for you. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time and we'll see you in the next video.